now we have Dr. Chen from Neutraland USA. Thank you so much for having us. Well, it is absolutely my pleasure. Thanks for having me as part of your show. Of course. So I've heard a lot about you. Well, thank you. <laughs> tell me, so tell me and tell our listeners about your story, about yourself and about your company. So um, I have been in the dietary supplement industry for 46 years. Okay. And I started in this industry because my maternal grandmother had cancer and she found a doctor who specialized in uh, what we would now call integrative approach mm -hmm. to treating the cancer. Uh, and she got well. Oh. And uh, I got to, I was a very young child at the time. Uh, in fact, it's actually started before I was born. And I got to know my grandmother and when she died, it wasn't of a degenerative disease. Mm -hmm. And as I got older and understood the significance of that, I wanted to understand how that was possible when everybody else was dying from this problem. Disease, yes. And so I started studying that. So I earned degrees in nutrition and herbal medicine, and I've been doing this business for a long time. And I think it's an absolutely fascinating business. I've spent time doing um, research, uh, formulating products, teaching at the university level uh, on healthcare professionals. Oh, nice. And, um, then uh, a couple of years ago, hooked up with Neutraland USA as the chief scientific officer mm -hmm. and absolutely love it. I, I, I love the owners of the company, the very, very high ethical standards. They always want to do things right. Okay. And that attracted me. And they want to have something that's sustainable. They want to be very fair to all of the workers, everybody that's, you know, involved both uh, here and internationally. Uh, people who are, you know, picking the plants and doing the stuff, making sure everybody's getting compensated fairly and it's all good. So I loved all that about the company and was really excited to be able to help coordinate clinical studies. Not the only one who does it, but I, I get to be very actively involved in that. And I love the fact that research is important because it's very important to me. Yeah. And I love the fact that research is important to our company. Okay. So, so you, have, you took an, an, a childhood experience. You took it to academic level, and right. then you joined Neutraland, you said. That is correct. That's exactly it. And the truth of the matter is, I never wanted to be in any other business except for this one. I love what I do. Full disclosure, my very first major in, in college was theater. Um, I did that for about a semester, and then I decided I'd rather make a living. Um, and so, oh, I, yeah. <laughs> so, I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Naturally, I changed to nutrition because that's what one does when they stop doing theater. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I loved it. Love what I, I love do. That. Okay. So you mentioned that Neutraland they do work with the uh, growers. They oversee the harvesting. They do the extraction. Right. You do everything. That's correct. We want to make we want to have a, a real good handle on the uh, materials that we're using, mm -hmm. and so we we contract with people locally to do. The, do the like wild crafting for instance we have a material that is a vegan vitamin d3 it's derived from a, a, a plant a, a lichen that's often eaten by the reindeer and so they call it reindeer lichen because the reindeer is like to eat it um, and that has to be picked it has to be picked in alpine regions it has to be wild crafted so you have people who are trained to go in and wild craft it in a, in a responsible ethical way so you don't decimate a region and we take that back to the facility where it is then goes through an herbal extraction process. You've mentioned multiple times now ethical way, ethical way. How do you ensure that all your process is going through the ethical well, way? It's traceable and yeah, transparent. So one of the things is we're very, very careful about, let me use the example of the vitamin D material again. Lichens, there's tens of thousands of lichens. Some are on the endangered species list. Oh. And you can find them growing right near the other lichens. Okay. Okay. You have to know what what is growing, where it's growing. Make sure you're picking the right ones. Make sure you're being responsible about picking only that kind mm -hmm. that is not on the endangered species list, nor is it in any way uh, going to be a material that is, that is remotely endangered. Um, it's plentiful. It's, you know readily available and so uh, that's one thing we do also we make sure because internationally you have issues like child labor and things and we absolutely don't involve any of that yep. it's all 
all uh, adults who are trained in how to do this and we make absolutely certain they're paid a fair and equitable wage. So it's done in a very responsible way. Um, and then everything is processed in a, in a very responsible way. And ultimately we end up with material that we're pretty proud of. And then we're very transparent in our process. For example, to my knowledge at this time, we're the only um, supplier of a vegan vitamin D material where we'll tell you exactly what the species is of the lichen that we're using. Uh, we, we let it be known. We want people to know that it's the right stuff. And I've heard something earlier interesting about you that you have most of your products is backed up by clinical trials. Right? Yeah, so we, we, it's very important. I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, we have a vitamin D source, yeah. that's great, okay. But when you start talking about something a little different, like, um, for example, black ginger extract or a Miracel, which is our a rice germ extract, um, you got to have some science behind it. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, you know, that's, that, that is one of the things that we're big on, where we just finished two studies on that. We have our tomato source melatonin, melatonin that, that is okay. derived from tomato extract. We have another one derived from the St. John's Ward extract. We have studies on those. So, uh, yeah, these are things that is, are very important to us. And we don't just have studies running, we have new ones that are in, in planning stages, where we're taking it to the next step, doing more studies. Oftentimes we start out with a pilot study, see what moves the dial, and then say, that's great, we got good results, now let's do a full-blown, randomized, controlled trial. And that's exciting. And but I get that to share- costs and I get a lot to, of money. Yeah, but you have to do it if you want to be responsible. Um, it's not just responsibility, it's if you want to show that you have a material that is, um, that is worth using. I agree, uh, no, I agree 100%. It's not, it's not just, I've got a nice material, but when you have brands that are interested in using it, they're like, okay, what can I say about it? Yeah. Well, you have to substantiate claims. How do you do that? By doing the studies, by supporting that. And we do that with different clinical research organizations, depending upon the kind of study we want to do. Like, for example, right now we're doing a study on our tomato melatonin, our tomato, mm -hmm. and uh, we're doing it with a clinical research organization that uses wearable devices so it'll track the sleep, the kind of sleep they're getting, what's going on, their heart rate. It's a very uh, more we do complete... it in collaboration with yeah. another uh, yeah. And then we do other studies where we're strictly looking at biomarkers, other studies where we're looking at sci using scientifically validated questionnaires. Sometimes we're doing a combination of the above oh, nice. to make sure that we're doing the right kind of study to give the right kind of support for the kind of claims that are being made. I mean, I, I, in the industry, I'm sort of known for uh, getting up on my soapbox and say, you got to use a clinically relevant dose of the right material in order yeah. to support claims. So how could I be anything but working for a company that does that does very that. thing? Oh yeah, that's a, a perfect match. So walk us a little bit about the procedure of quality control in your company. Yeah, so the quality control takes place at several levels. Um, let's say it starts in the manufacturing facility. Now, our manufacturing facility is in China, and China often gets a bad rap. Yes. For, and there's sometimes there's some very good reasons for it. In the case of our facility, it's one of a few that you can count on one hand the number of nutraceutical manufacturing facilities in China that have actually been inspected by the US FDA and passed with flying colors. That place is so pristine you could eat off the floor. Everything is done very, very well. Everything is done very, very cleanly. And we have documentation on every single step of the procedure. All the quality control, all the quality assurance, everything is documented. As we said, the actual you know, FDA inspected it and said, oh yeah, you're doing everything great, you know. And so that's, that's a, a first step. Now, we also have labs there where they'll test the materials. They'll test not only for the actives in the materials, they'll test for heavy metals. They'll look at microbiological agents that may be present or hopefully not. And, and so we do all, of, yes, all of those things. And then we bring that to the US where we stock it in our warehouses. And then we do another degree of testing where we send out to third party testing facilities like Eurofins. Okay. And we will test the materials and do all the same tests 
all over again. So even though it's our own labs, we don't say that's enough. We say we have to have third-party verification. Amazing. We do that. So we do all the testing of that, and it's, you know, and that's how it's done. We are able to provide that kind of documentation to our customers who are the brands okay. that use it. And then uh, be there to, and one of the things that impressed me when I came to work is there's documentation on just everything you can imagine. You want to, do you have documentation on that? Yeah. We have every document you could possibly imagine. And so our, our supply, our, our brands love us for that reason. It's, they ask for something and we've got it. j &P, they say if it's not documented, That's it's right. a rumor. So. That's right. Even to the extent that on our tomato uh, material, we actually did Alchemist Assured. Alchemist is one of those third-party labs that specialize in botanicals. Mm -hmm. And Alchemist Assured takes the process a step beyond where you're doing deep level of testing on every single batch of material to demonstrate that it's meeting all of the requirements and then some. And it's a certification. And um, so we're the only one that has a plant-based melatonin that has actually Alchemist Assured. And so we have that additional layer and um, so, yeah, and then, you know, then of course we do the, uh, the, the clinical studies on, on our materials so we can see that we have a safety uh, and, and, and a human subjects as well. So, yeah, okay. I, I'd say that covers it in a pretty yeah, broad way. Pretty broad way. What's your star product? What's your, what the product that you sell the most? We sell the most of our, uh, our vitamin D. It's vitamin called Vega D. Delight. Mm -hmm. Now, vitamin D, D3 to be specific, because D3 yeah, is known yeah. to be more active, active. than D2. Mm -hmm. And um, the most common vitamin D on the market is uh, your conventional, which is a vitamin D that is made by taking lanolin mm -hmm. from sheep's wool, mm -hmm. which does not contain vitamin D. No. It has to go through a synthetic process in the lab to can make it vitamin D3, which is fine, but it's neither vegan nor natural. Nope. People think it's natural. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's not. Yeah. So, we offer an alternative, which is it's vegan, mm -hmm. and it's not only is it natural; it's literally present in the plant. We extract it like an herbal extract, and we're able to provide that in you know uh, powders and oils in a conventional form and USDA organic certified. Yeah. Um, and that is by far our our uh, biggest selling product. And then we have others too. We have like our K2 products. So we have our MK7s, we have the natto derived like many do, but we also offer a chickpea derived one, which is nice because some people are concerned about, you know, the soy for natto, they have issues with it, whatever. We offer an alternative to that. And, and we offer a number of different things, but I'm, you know, and, and many of our products like the K are also USDA yeah. certified organic, there's options for that. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're always, we're always innovating. innovating. I've got new stuff again. that's, I've got new stuff that's happening, some of which I can't even share with you because we're, we're in early, early stages. We've got a new material that we're looking at that is going to have both a pilot study done on it and a, and a randomized control trial. We're in uh, early process stages, yes. for that right now. Okay. Uh, and one of them is going to be very interesting because it, it's going to address sleep. It's a non-melatonin material, but it's going to address sleep and be very comparable to a current uh, prescription medication uh, oh. um, and may even be more effective. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but some of the early data that we've seen suggests that's a distinct okay. possibility. So I'm excited oh, about okay. that. So we need to follow up on that. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, yeah. you do. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so so we've got so much happening. And like I said, we just, we just completed some new studies recently, and I'm very excited about those. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, so like it's on our, uh, our Miracel rice germ. Oh, that's another thing. Both our tomato-derived melatonin and our Miracel rice germ are upcycled materials. Okay. So for example, um, for our rice germ, we rescue the rice germ from the milling industry that mills rice to make it white. It would normally throw away okay. so the rice germ material. We rescue that, we up, upcycle it, and use that as a source to derive the polyamines that okay. are the active compounds. Nice. And so, and we do the same thing with the tomato, mm -hmm. where it's used in the, in, the, um, in the food industry where they're making tomato juice or tomato paste, and they're so throwing they away the parts of the tomato. tomato. We're tomato. rescuing all of that. It ends up being uh, the equivalent the of the whole tomato, but we're rescuing that, we're using that. 
So it's, it's very eco-friendly in that sense. That's nice. Where do you see the industry going in the coming upcoming few years? You know, if we keep going like we are, which I foresee, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have everything that we have now, more studies on it, more new ingredients, mm -hmm. each of which are going to have studies that support it, looking at in areas of application that are very, very important. When we look at stuff, we don't just go, oh, here's a cool idea. We say, okay, you know, what's going on in the industry? What are the areas? What areas are trending? What are, what are some of the needs out there? And so we try to find things that we think are going to support some of the some of the nutritional needs that are underserved or maybe just a hot area. Okay. And or, or both. Or both. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where I see I see us continuing to do what we're doing, perhaps doing more in the area of white labeling some of those things for brands who brands want who to make it easier. We're just doing yes. a little of that now, but I see us doing more of that. More of that. And that's okay. that's what I see happening. Okay, well, uh, if we want to know more about you and about your brands, how can we find you? Well, you go to Neutraland.com. You can also send an email to info at uh, Neutraland. Uh, it's NeutralandUSA.com. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so while Miracel, our, our rice germ material, isn't a new product, we have the, uh, some new studies, um, two of which I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that is the uh, polyamine's claim to fame is it stimulates a, pro a process in the body known as autophagy, which you may know about, but everybody else doesn't always yeah. know. And that's a cellular process where the cell will actually uh, recycle old damaged cell materials, break them down, clean them up, re use re reusable peptide okay. chains, and make a better functioning cell. Now, the polyamines are known for that, but they're known for that based on epidemiological research. So doing dietary surveys and saying, well, they're getting this much polyamines. And so based on that, we can see that there's a relationship between that and autophagy. But nobody had done a study saying, what if we put in and measure the exact amount and this amount and measure biomarkers of autophagy? We did that and we found with a very specific amount, 3.3 milligrams of the active, it really nicely moved the markers of autophagy, it was very, very effective, and increased BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, a cognitive wellness marker, okay. and had significant decreases in C-reactive protein, an inflammatory marker, VLDL cholesterol, a cardiovascular uh, marker, and triglycerides have significantly decreased that too. So we were having cardiometabolic improvements, we were having that aging improvement, and then we did another large human clinical trial showing that uh, in people with mild cognitive dysfunction, which is not, not like dementia, like, you know, you're getting older, you have uh, cognitive dysfunction that it actually had a substantial improvement in cognitive ability. Wow. And if you compared it to placebo, the percentage difference was 98%. This was 98% that's a big percentage. That's huge. So that's just some of the stuff that we're doing that excites me. Oh my God. I, I love that that part of the, of the world. Of, you don't feel like you're doing business. You feel like you're doing science, like you're do you know, understanding what's happening. When the week is over and it's Friday, I'm like, oh, the weekend's here. And then all weekend, I'm thinking about this stuff, and I'm like, I can't wait till Monday. Exactly. So I love it. That makes your job amazing. It is. I'm really happy for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.